Hi, my name is Barry Bowling. I'm an application engineer with Yokogawa's Test and Measurement Department. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to capture and observe the AC output waveform during the switchover of a large UPS system. A UPS is an uninterruptible power supply which is intended to supply emergency power to a load when the input power source fails. A UPS is typically used to protect hardware such as computers, data centers, telecom equipment, or other equipment where an unexpected power disruption could cause injuries, fatalities, business disruption, or data loss. They come in many different volt amp sizes. Uh, the, the UPS I'm testing today is a 2000 volt amp UPS. Okay, the UPS AC input cord is connected to the grid, in this case simply 120 volts, uh, 60 hertz. The output of the UPS is connected to this breakout box. And this breakout box simply gives me a safe and easy way to connect a test instrument across the output of the UPS so that when I run the switchover test, I can watch the voltage waveform. I'm set up so that I can monitor the UPS voltage waveform while I force the UPS to switch from mains power to inverter battery output. There will be a very small glitch or anomaly on that AC waveform when that switchover occurs. And I want to catch and view that on the DL850 scope quarter. So to do that, I'm going to use the wave window trigger, a standard trigger option that's on the DL850E. Uh, so now let me show you the wave window trigger settings. Okay, here are the settings for the wave window trigger. You're going to uh, push the simple enhanced trigger button, or you can do it with the mouse here like I'm doing it. Uh, you're going to set type as wave window, and under pattern, there's just several settings. One is to tell it which channel to watch, that's channel one in this case. You're going to give it um, kind of an, you can think of this as an error. It's called width. Um, if, if this were 9 volts exactly, it would tolerate plus and minus 4.5 volts of error voltage around your nominal sine wave. You need to tell the wave window trigger uh, the cycle frequency. In our case, it's 60 hertz. And the reference cycle. That means it's going to use two full sine waves as uh, the reference template. And again, here we're telling it to watch only channel one. So that's the wave window trigger settings. Let's talk next about what to expect during this test and discuss a little bit further about how this trigger actually works. When I force the UPS to switch over to its internal inverter and batteries, a very small glitch, seen here, occurs in the otherwise very smooth filtered output of the UPS. That very small glitch is difficult to trigger on. It is not a simple level trigger because typically the sine wave output of the UPS can be simultaneously higher level and lower level than the glitch's absolute voltage level. So the way that the scope quarter overcomes this is that it forms a template. This template is simply the previous waveform. In this case, a sine wave or two cycles of it is captured and a bit of margin or width is added to it. In other words, some room for noise and some glitch is permitted by this width setting, and this is adjustable. So as the waveform is being monitored, the scope quarter simply compares each incoming waveform cycle, one or two full cycles of it, up to four, to the previous full cycles of the same waveform. If any anomaly is detected, the scope triggers. Okay, now I'm ready to run the test. The scope trigger is armed and waiting all I have to do is force the UPS to switch over to its internal battery and inverter. This will simulate the grid dropping out. Here we go. Okay, we've captured our glitch. I'm going to press stop. And uh, we can use the zoom feature in this case to zoom in on the glitch there uh, during the UPS switchover. I hope that you have found this demonstration to be informative and useful. Thank you for watching my demonstration of the wave window trigger. Uh, for further inquiry, please do not hesitate to contact an application engineer or visit us at tmi.yokogawa.com.